Uh, Dr. Jerry Hill, I think I speak on a lot of people's behalf, so I say racing owes you a great deal of thanks after everything that's gone on since last March. But from your perspective, now MBE as well, um, how satisfying is it to see top sport going on, but also people here now to enjoy it as well? We're actually our first meeting at Newcastle and to watch the resumption of racing there. It was almost a tear to the eye moment actually because it was an extraordinary sight to see the jockeys and horses back racing down the track. And as the years gone forward there have been lots of different milestones, um, some of them good, some of them less good, but there have been milestones along the way and we've been able to continue to deliver our sport um, and to see spectators back and to begin to get the noise and the buzz around the race course. It's just fantastic to hear. We don't need to labour the points about everyone remembers racing was halted last March and as you rightly said back in June as well. But from your personal perspective and, and the team that obviously worked to get to a resumption in the first place, how emotionally, physically straining, strenuous was it for you and everyone involved? Um, it's been pretty full on, I can yeah. say that. I was reflecting on this the other day and think I've been busier now than I was when I was a junior houseman. Working on one in two. We better wait for the stewards in now. We'll let the result come through for yeah. the sprint. The placings well, remain unaltered. The oh, no. placings Very continue. good. Thank you, Very good. So yes, yeah, so it's been it's been an extraordinary year, um, and there are lots of us who've worked longer hours than perhaps we should do, and perhaps it's healthy to do. Um, but we've had support from each other, and certainly from my point of view, the support I've had from my family and my wife, who's actually standing behind you, has been extraordinary. How humbling is it, because William Haggis has pushed as well that to sponsor the race in, in your name, Dr Jerry Hill, thank you very much, yeah. of course, for, for your services. Has that been quite a humbling thing for you to take in? It has, and to be fair, I still feel a bit awkward about the whole thing, yeah. because actually it's, it's not about me, it's about the industry. It's like, you know, I've been privileged to be made an MBE. Actually, that's an that's a award for the industry. That is very much reflecting how we've come together, we've worked together, there's been much, much better dialogue than we've ever had. And that's the bit which, please God, when we get to post-COVID, whenever that is, a lot of that dialogue will continue into the future. With all the different facets of this industry, be it the people that are here now as spectators, people that obviously work in the sport, people that ride in the sport and provide the horses, you mentioned the fact that they had to come together, but would this have at all been possible without a collaborative effort? It would have been very difficult and certainly historically there's been a sense from time to time a bit of silo working with the industry because quite rightly individual areas will look after their members' interests. But what we had here, we had a common purpose and with that common purpose we came together and we've been successful in delivering. How strong would the message be that although on Monday things, many people calling it Freedom Day etc, um, how, how much of an importance is it to you to stress that we are still cautious, cautiously optimistic, but still a little bit careful going forward. I think it's essential. Um, I was saying to William just a moment ago, actually, I feel more anxious about the next few weeks than I have done at any time in the past. And that's partly because, of course, now it's up to individuals to make the right decision. But also we're in a situation where, you know, you can look at the numbers, you can see case numbers are going up. 50,000 cases a day, that is going to have an impact on those of us who are not yet double vaccinated. And of course, if you look from a sport perspective, apart from the privilege of the, you know, the Olympic athletes who have been double vaccinated, there aren't many in sports who are fully vaccinated simply because they fall into the younger age groups. And so that we must continue to protect them to avoid that 10 days quarantine which looms if they become contacts. Is there almost a wider message to learn from this in ways? Because I know that obviously working now for horse racing, in horse racing, but I think prior you were with the Football Association and London 2012 Olympics as well. Does, is there a, a way of sport learning from the last few months and over the last year and a bit or so? I think so. I think we need to be aware about the impact of infection on us. We need to be aware that actually if you're stronger and fitter and healthier, you're going to be more resistant to it. But actually what we need to do is to continue that collaborative working that's that's the key thing and particularly in racing which has got lots of individual sectors within it we need to continue to have conversations because it's all of our responsibility to deliver something which is safe and it allows our sport to continue to function and as amphitheatres sporting amphitheatres go we're here on the July course as well and there has never been any secret the fact that people are able to spread out and socially distance and keep distance from each other etc Racing in itself, I suppose, has always been one of those places, as in race courses, that, that can offer that side of things like many sports perhaps can't. 
Exactly, and to be fair, that was one of the key factors which allowed us to give Vig back yeah. um, one of the early sports. I have to say, we were beaten by Greyhound Racing. I think they came back two hours before we did on the 1st of June, but there you go, you can't have everything. But you know, our great asset has been our space, the fact we can spread out, and that's the thing we mustn't squander now by thinking, actually, let's all just gather in together. And so I think you know, we can continue to deliver a safe product. But last day as well, um, and many congratulations and thanks on behalf of a lot of people as well for your work, but congratulations on the MBE and the recognition that you have received. But you said about the next few weeks and perhaps months worry you, but if there's a message you've got to people that how, how sort of cautiously optimistic are you that racing is in the best possible place to, to kick on to the next phase and look forward rather than look back? I think racing is in a really good place yeah. as long as people don't take their eye off the ball. And just remember that actually you know, the things that we've been going on, those physical protections of you know, distance, hand washing, making place, you know, well ventilated space, you know, wearing a mask, you may not have to do those, but they're certainly sensible things to protect you, your colleagues and your sport. And that all needs to be underpinned by people taking the option of getting vaccinated. Because the vaccination is going to be the game changer, not just for us in this sport, but for the country as a whole. So it's Cherry Hill MBE, look, thank you very much indeed for getting the show back on the road as well. And um, on behalf of a lot of people, I think we'd be saying that. William Haggis, I know William Jarvis came over to shake your hand and congratulate you as well. Yeah. I think you've got a trophy to present now, haven't I you? I probably have, actually, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed and Good. enjoy your afternoon. Good, thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you.